ago. We saw a really great version of this uh, at the Star City Invitational in Atlanta um, two weeks ago, uh, I believe it was two weeks ago, uh, in the finals where there was a mirror match there, and that was, that was a fascinating game to watch. Uh, so Greg is a local guy, he's, uh, he's well known for top eighting many PTQs and winning none of them. Uh, he is owner of many steak knives and is hoping to someday get an invite. Uh, and Mark is also a local player, not, not quite as famous. And so we're off to the races. Mark has led off with the forest and Greg is responding with a tapped black white land. Yeah, both of these decks really are setting up for a big turn. Uh, because they're both Thrag Tusk decks, we can expect the game to go a little bit late here, but it's really those trump cards, the Angel of Serenities and the Crater Hook Behemoths that are going to decide this game. Yeah, and there's, so there's a lot of jockeying for position for can I get enough guys on the board that my Crater Hoof is going to be lethal versus your Crater Hoof, and there's potential for reanimated Angels of Serenity to mess with that. Right, so I mean, so most games will end in a Crater Hoof of some sort. Uh, two Crater Hoofs in Mark's deck, I believe, uh, only one in Greg's. So yep. Greg's going to have a little, he's going to have to try something a little bit different. He has three Angel of Serenities in his deck, but he, he'll have to dig a little harder to get his Crater Hoof. Yep. Uh, and Greg also is, is down on the Lingering Souls count. He only has two versus Mark's three, um, which is also kind of an important card for that getting ready uh, for the Crater Hoof. So it looks like Mark uh, has, is ahead of the race a little bit in building up his graveyard. We have a Grizzly Salvage that put a Angel of Serenity into his graveyard. Uh, and he does have an Unburial Rites in his hand. Right. And now we're seeing Greg mulching um, and putting uh, two Restoration Angels and an Arbor Elf into his graveyard while getting a uh, land into his hand. With all these Angels and Thrag Tusks in Mark's hand, Mark might even be able to win without a reanimation plan. What's going to be the bottleneck in this game for him is the fact that he's only on four lands right now and doesn't have another one in his hand. As long as he gets his fifth one next turn, he can stick on five for a while and probably be okay just by the sheer amount of beasts and five, you know, five threes beasts and life gain he can put on the table. Yeah. And because he's drawn the other Angel of Serenity, if he gets up to seven mana, he will be able to loop the two of them. Yeah. Um, and so that's that's a really strong late game. So he's drawn a, uh, a Cavern of Souls for the turn, so he's gone to that five mana that uh, and is so important. His whole hand's just activated now. So we're going to see, you know, your prototypical Thrag Tusk Wars are going to be starting here. You know, both life totals will start heading in the wrong direction. Um, this Cavern's on Angel, that's just a mana fixing play. Yep. Uh, it puts him up to three white for the Angel of Serenity. So we have Thrag Tusk into presumably Thrag Tusk Angel, although maybe the opposite order. Uh, Greg on taps for the turn, draws. Let's see if we can see if he'll show us his hand, give us an idea of what's coming up for him. Yeah, Greg has the ability to press some mana advantage here because of all these all these mana creatures he has. Yeah. So he can get to his late game faster. There we see him on Barrow Ice. He still doesn't have a great monster in the graveyard to hit with it. The best he has is Restoration Angel and continues to just be Restoration Angel. Yeah. But he's building up that mana advantage um, with with the mulch, you know, getting him a two for one here, which is going to be important. Um, and it looks like he's got uh, an Angel of Serenity in his hand. He also has a Grizzly Salvage in his hand. Uh, and is that a Thrag Tusk or another Pilgrim in his hand? And he certainly, certainly has a lot of lands. So it looks like he's going to be casting that Grizzly Salvage. That's what he's put he up to the front. He does have an Angel of Serenity, it yep. appears to be. But other than that, he doesn't, you know... And he'll be able to get there faster than Mark gets to wherever he's going. So the Angel will be able to really stem the tide of these, the, the Thrag Tusks from Mark. Yep. So Greg decides, instead of casting the Grizzly Salvage, to uh, cast a Centaur Healer, gain three life, and protect himself from the Thrag Tusk. Yeah. Uh, that's presumably coming in. It's probably most important for him to be mana efficient right now more than anything else. Because of the lands he has and the pacing of this game, he shouldn't, you know, he, he'll he probably have fine time to play something like Grizzly Salvage for, for full value. Mm -hmm. um, that's at center, he was not that important, so maybe it's not the right, you know, maybe get, I don't know how important it is to get it down. Um, Greg's protecting his life total, which is probably right. Yeah. He's going to be, at least until we get to mythic, you know, big mythic rare time, he's going to be losing a bunch of life. Yeah. He's down in the fight. So, Greg takes the five, um, possibly, well, it, Greg takes the five, uh, goes to 18, and Mark follows up with another Thrag Tusk. I thought it was a heads-up play to take the five there. I, I think he, he's trying to, I mean, it seems like he's trying to avoid putting a Thrag Tusk in the graveyard, which doesn't make too much sense because it's an Angel of Serenity already in the graveyard. Yeah. 
but you know that that trade will be available to him whenever he wants it. Yeah, and there, there's definitely value in keeping your creature count higher for you know the, uh, the possibility hoof. of the crater hoof. Um, you know, it's it's potentially just one grizzly salvage away from getting on burial rights and the crater hoof in your graveyard. Yeah, I don't so. believe it's lethal yet if it does happen. So he still with his best. Yeah. Best target is still just a Restoration Angel. Like, you don't see that fifth card there, so... I think it was another uh, Grizzly Salvage. Okay, we can't um, take that one, so... Bunch of lands and an angel. An angel. Yep, yeah, it is yep. a Grizzly Salvage. So, Greg, really Greg should have enough land that he can just take this Restoration. Uh, and he wants an off. untapped land. He doesn't actually have triple white yet for his Angel. I don't. I don't know if he has it. Well, game. he's got two Evisons, uh oh, Pilgrim. Yeah, out. he does. That's. I don't know. The restora restoration angel doesn't. I think he. He must not feel that it matters too much on this board. I'm, that that's potentially very true, and you know, being able to have seven mana and not tapping your Evisons Pilgrims is valuable. Yeah, Greg is a little low on resources, uh, so he might, he's going to have to watch out to make sure he doesn't burn through all his dig and you know he's he, I was kind of wondering about the unbarrel rights yeah and yeah. this is a little aggressive um unbarrel rightsing to the the angel just to gain three just to gain three seems is aggressive my worry is that once he I mean once he has his angel of serenity he doesn't have a great loop going for it yet. yeah no it, it most likely it's going to be an offensive Angel of Serenity either emptying out Mark's graveyard um, to make sure that he can't reanimate something or getting rid of uh, some Thrag Tusks that are blocking the way. But Mark's play is very straightforward. He's drawn a third Thrag Tusk yeah. uh, and still no more land, so it's probably still just swinging with creatures casting Thrag Tusk again. And so we're, we're kind of dirling around, like you said, with the life totals going the wrong way, and that's going to continue until somebody draws the appropriate Game Breaker, which... Um, really is a crater hook behemoth um so if you're mark when do you when do you want to pull the trigger on the unburial rights on the angel of serenity so he has the unburial rights in hand correct yep. um once i have an army that i feel like i can put him on really on a back foot by doing it so you you, you want to use it almost like a falter you i think i want to use it as a falter yeah the, the worry is that greg has could have crater hook behemoth mm -hmm. And that, you know, that that's that's the scary thing. You have to, you'd have to worry about Greg casting it out of hand. Yeah. Granted, it's eight. So at what point, at whatever point, that becomes a lethal play is when I want to pull the trigger because I don't yeah. want to get, you know, we're at thirty. So right now we'd have to tap two mana creatures to play Crater Hoof Behemoth. His guys would all get plus six plus six, so we'd have seven. So you know, our, our, our damage would be seven plus eight. It would be only a twenty-five point, well, twenty-five point swing. Sorry, thirty-five point swing with Trample. So actually, like right now, it would be a lethal swing. Yeah. So I won't. Sorry, I think we have our restoration, so that's seven on blocking. So we'd only take 28 if he played one right now, so we'd be at two. If we we could throw both the restoration angel and the, we can even actually go to 25. Oh, if we sorry, wanted. I'm doing the math for the other side. You're doing the math for Mark having the crater right. hoof behemoth. I'm doing no, it no, for no, no. Greg if, if Greg it. casts the crater hoof, Mark by his restoration angel play can only take 25 damage. If if, okay. if Greg were to tap out for a restor for a crater hook right now, so it's still safe. As soon as Greg makes another land drop, mm -hmm. then I believe that will be that because I'll have one extra attacker because one less mana creature to have to tap. Then I believe it would be a lethal swing. So mm -hmm. Then I think I think that's when Mark needs to pull the triggers to stop that from being lethal. Um, so I'm doing the math and I'm actually getting to 36 here. I, well, right. It, but, thing Mark, but Mark, because he'll be able to flash a Restoration Angel into play, block with Angel, Beast Token, and the th untapped Thrag Tusk could prevent some of the damage. Oh, the, that's where the other point that's the, Yeah, that's I where was, I'm throwing in the extra the beast points. Token. Uh, so it looks like we're hardcasting an Angel of Serenity out of Greg's hand. Seems... And... You know, it's a trap. And I don't think you want to do it right now because I think you know that Restoration Angel is going to happen. Well, so... You have to do it to, do it to all your... I, I think you just have to do it to all your own stuff. Well, so you can you can take his uh, angel and maybe his mana creature. I would just want to take all my own cards. I don't really want to, you know. I, 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 I the problem is like he doesn't have very interesting things in maybe, his own yeah, maybe, graveyard. Maybe take, take his mana creature for sure. Yeah, I for sure take his Avzan's Pilgrim. You know, I don't know if I really want to take his Thrag Tusk. No, I, I agree. Taking the Thrag Tusk seems like a trap. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, you have to assume a Restoration Angel here. Me is going for Thrag Tusk. And we don't know what else. 
waiting to find out. So here comes the Restoration Angel. It's going to blink the Thrag Tusk that Greg pointed at. And the question is what the third uh, target is. But So we're getting the Beast. Yeah, he was targeting the Pilgrim. Pilgrim. Okay. So it is going to get Pilgrim. So we went Pilgrim, Thrag, that, and then that, you know, that's actually exactly the same as not targeting Thrag Tusk, because Marco's already kind of committed to the Angel to Thrag Tusk line anyway. Yep. So I think that turns out to be, that's the fine. end result is exactly what should be what should be happening yep. here. I still feel like that play was a little aggressive. Um, I don't, like, as odd as it sounds, I don't, I'm not, I don't feel like Greg got enough value off that Angel. No, that's, that's, that's very true. Like, he, he set back Mark's mana development a little bit, which seems like the most valuable thing that he got. That was like, the, the best part was that he killed yeah. the mana creature of that play. The, but, like, that, that, was, that was actually the best thing. The Restoration Angel really has very little effect. Yeah, I mean, if Angels could... Yeah, Angels can't even flicker Angel. I don't know. There's, yeah, there's not many plays. Now, because Greg's out of gas right now, mm -hmm. which means as soon as Mark hits lands, Mark's just clearly ahead. Yeah. So we're going to see Mark uh, play the mana creature that he's drawn for this turn. Um, can't cast the Umbrial Rites in his hand right now. Can't cast the. Uh, he can't cast the Angel of Serenity in his hand. I don't think he has any particularly good abrupt decay targets. Um, and attacking, he doesn't have any good attacks. So I think we're on mana creature go, unless there's one more card that I'm not seeing. He has an abrupt case. He's going to decay the Centaur's Herald. Sure, that's keeping creatures off. Keeping his, Greg's creature count low is important. It helps stop the Crater Hoof plan. Remember, Greg still only has one Crater Hoof. And because of that, you know, Greg has trouble actually winning this game. Yeah. Now there's, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of things that he can do to slow down the losing, but... It, you really need the Crater Hoof in these mirrors in order to punch things through. Uh, so we, we have an attack from Mark here. Um, and actually, Greg is low enough in life that this is actually threatening his life total. Yeah, I mean, so that's, I think Greg, Greg chose to run out the Angel, the Angel of Serenity, because he felt this need to block stuff, which yeah. is legitimate. So presumably we're blocking a Thrag Tusk and with the Angel of Serenity and a Beast Token with the Restoration Angel and maybe chumping another Thrag Tusk and taking three? Is that a reasonable set of things that we can do here? Yeah, I, it's, I mean, yeah, you want to just, I think you want to eat and trade, yeah, I think you want to just eat creatures as much as possible. Um, you know, maybe, I, I, like, I like how he's playing this here. What really all Greg needs to do, because he has an unburial rights in hand, the only thing what, what Greg needs to do is make sure that he kills a flyer every opportunity, not mm -hmm. a Thrag Dust, because the flyers are, could actually kill him. And then once, let, like what Greg needs to have happen is he needs to draw Thrag Dust, because once he does, his life total will be more or less, it'll feel a lot safer. Yeah, it'll be stable, and he'll also be able to, you know, so he, start running out more right. Restoration Angels and getting blockers and so on. So, so he wants to kill flying creatures, he wants to take, take his opponent's flyers out. And Mark, still without more lands, um, you know, this is, this is Greg's opening. Greg needs to do, needs to hopefully get some sort of threat, a Thrag Tusk, or ideally a Crater Hoof before Mark gets his lands. Yep. As soon as Mark gets enough power in play, and we, we actually have seen next turn even, actually next turn if Greg doesn't make a play, Mark can uh, unburial rights the, the angel around knee for the win. Yeah. I mean, really, it's interesting because the, the fact that Greg has ha didn't have Thrag Tusks in this Thrag Tusk mirror has turned out to be very key. This is a mirror that's usually all gummed up and in this case ends up not being. So we've got another Angel second of Serenity. Angel. Angel of Serenity. Yeah. So... He has to go for it. It's, yeah. He's still in a really bad spot. This, so is this the point that you have to actually take your opponent's Angel Serenity out of their graveyard to make sure they can't reanimate it? I like that play, and I don't think that he saw that. Um, yeah, I do, you know, if you suspect an Unburial right, yeah, it takes away a lot of his outs to not have Mark... Yeah, I would definitely put the... I would get the Angel out of Mark's graveyard. Okay. Because uh, if that Angel comes finds its way into the, onto the battlefield, you're just in so much trouble. You, you know, he gets... Everything comes back. Yeah, that's it, that's a nightmare. So Greg attacks with his non-summoning sick Angel of Serenity. We've got two beast tokens for Mark. 
waiting for the second one. There we go. So Mark goes down a 30, which is still very, very, very healthy. Um, and possibly, like, well, it's, it's probably fine to extend there. Mark do a grizzly salvage, so it's not good yet. Although, but you know, that, that will find draw land. him a land, and that will enable the unburial rights in his hand. Um, and he doesn't really have any other choices at this point. So the, I mean, he wants to do this main phase, so if he draws a land this turn, and then draws a land next turn, he can play both of yeah. them. This is no, not hopefully he doesn't fall into that trap of end-stepping. Yeah. End -step. Not all instants need to be end-stepped. So, we're anticipating... You know, hit, he's gonna he's gonna go ahead and get a land off of that, set up a burial for the next turn. Mark passes the turn. Oh, he's, no, yep, he's, yep, he's going with the uh, you know instant surf tower to be played on end steps. Um, he's shaking his head. He's I think he believes he's losing this game. Um, I don't know if he. I still think he's ahead to be honest. Uh, less. It's, so. it's a lot closer than it was a turn cycle ago. But yeah, I, I, yeah, I think I, you're I right. I still like Mark's position. I w would have liked it more if he'd have played that. Oh, I need. And Greg withdrawing well, natural draw of the Crater of Behemoth. Now Mark is not ahead. I'm not even <laughs> sure Mark is alive. Um, so we so, have 16. So we're getting plus, plus six plus six. Oh, the, the, yeah, there's two mana creatures. Yeah, there's two yep, mana creatures. That's so easily enough. Yeah. So Greg Pellegrin, yeah, drawing all the Mythic Rares. Yeah, that is the Man, look of the a myth, happy Greg top are good, but Mythic Rares are better. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at the sideboards. Um, so one of the classic plans in these mirrors is a resource denial plan. Of I'm going to put in acidic slimes and I'm going to destroy your lands and I'm going to bring in Garrick uh, Relentless and I'm right. going to hit your mana creatures. You take turns eating those mana creatures. Yeah. Um, so that's that's definitely something that Greg is equipped to Greg, do. Yeah. So, yeah. Greg, he, so he's got one acidic slime. He's got two Garrick Relentless. He's going to bring those in. Um, there's a decent chance he brings in some abrupt decays if he's got enough space. I think I bring in a Cavern of Souls, assuming that my opponent is going to go you on this land destruction. Land. I just want more land. Absolutely. Um, and he's got Deathrite Shamans in his sideboard, which he can bring in too, which are mana creatures um, and also are some disruption. Um, and then the last card that he might consider bringing in, depending on how many cards he wants to take out, is uh, Obsidant. Um, it's, I don't like it very much here. I don't yeah, think it it's, actually... it's probably just too grindy. Well, it doesn't do enough. The problem is that Obsidat trades with Thrag Tusk, and like it's not good against the Mythic Rares, you know, the sevens and eights, and it's not really good against Thrag Tusk. So I don't, I just don't feel like you know, it's not the five drop I want. Okay, that that totally makes sense. I'd rather have it like, would you rather cast in this matchup an Obsidat or an Acidic Slime? I like, windmill slam the acidic slime. Exactly, and I think yeah. there's only so much five you can act. You know, you can't board into all your fives, and, and I don't even think that, that one's particularly good. Um, yeah. Mark's board is almost exactly the same. He has three death rate shamans. He does have. He only has one acidic slime, which actually I think is uh, Greg as well. They have so Mark yeah. will have three well, after board. Greg will have. Yeah, Greg's going to go up to the full four after board. So Mark's going to bring in three death rate shamans, two one acidic slime, well. two group relentless. Do you think he brings in... He no, one, the Vraska is not at all useful. He has one Vraska. Yeah, the problem with Vraska is that I don't think any of her abilities matter to yeah. enough. You know, the, the first, the plus ability, I know doesn't matter. Because, you know, well, the players are going to build on... If you get hit, you're already dead. Yeah, or, or they, can, they can choose not to hit you. Um, destroying a permanent... It doesn't also you can't destroy lands, which is like what you want. Which is what you'd want to destroy. I don't really. There's not one creature that you really need to blow up. Mm -hmm. um, and making assassins also doesn't really work. So yeah. I don't. It's okay. abilities, you know, they'll ignore the Vraska and then you're down a card. So we also, like, it's another five. You know, and yeah. the argument before about fives, I think, still holds. Yeah. So in both cases, it looks like we're just bringing in the Garricks, we're bringing in the Death Rites, we're bringing in the Aesthetic Slimes. Um, so what do we what do we want to cut in this matchup? So like the centaur healers seem like a very obvious cut. Um, yeah, they're they're terrible. <laughs> and in Mark stack, are the Lotleth trolls doing any work? Yeah. So each of them kind. Of, yeah. No. Um, when I look at things to cut, you know, in Mark stack we certainly get rid of. I think Lotleth troll seems like it does no work. Obsidat seems like it does no work. So he has he has three easy cuts there. You know, there's really only three other cards he wants in. I don't know how much work Lingering Souls actually does in this matchup. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm not. I know that you need to have a critical mass for a Creator Hook to make sure yeah. it's lethal. But I don't. I and I'm gonna. Some if you're if you know a lot about Reanimator, 
you know, feel free to tweet us what you normally brought out. My, because I, I don't play the deck as much, but my impression would be that Lingering Souls is not a particularly good matchup. So, in a number of the mirror matches I've seen, people have left them in. Okay. Um, because it, my, my guess yeah, that is that it's important be right. for jockeying for position for enough creatures for Lingerings, for uh, Crater Hook. Um, especially since there are, there are a decent amount of times, like we just saw, where you end up hard casting the Crater Hook, and so some of your creatures that are on the board end up being tapped, and you need to have three or four attackers. If both players are boarding in Garuk Relentlesses, then it makes a lot more sense to have Lingering Souls. You become more of just like this mid range matchup, and Lingering Souls is a great card, is, is a very passable, if not great card yeah. in mid range matchups. If that's the case, then when I'm looking at things, you know. Then I'm not I'm not positive. If that's the case, maybe you have to cut. I don't really want to cut any number of mulches or grizzly salvages. Yeah, and maybe it's a shave. Uh, so we have Mark keeping on the play, keeping his seven, but Greg is mulliganing to six, um, and you know is thinking about what sorts of things that he wants to, to have. Mark is you know sort of planning out what he's going to do with his opening hand. Mulliganing is not too tragic in this matchup. Both players have. I mean, the deck has a very strong card advantage engine, and it's really, you know. How, how fast of velocity can you get going? Yeah. Uh, you can easily recoup for the fact of not having, you know, one good mulch and, and you don't care. You know, mulch draw three lands, now, now you're fine. All right, and let's see if Greg's six is any better than his seven. And he's gonna keep. All right. All right. So Mark leads out with the Overgrown Tomb and Avacyn's Pilgrim. Starting the mana engine right off. And it looks like Greg's gonna, gonna well, not quite Death mirror Shaman. it. Yeah. That's right, Shaman. Um, remember, it's funny, so lands typically don't find their way into the graveyard in this matchup because Mulch can't put a land into the yep. into the graveyard. Uh, Death Rite Shaman's largely just a graveyard hate card. As opposed to, if you play modern, you're used to it being a mana creature, which it's not. Yep, and sometimes you see some grizzly salvaging. Putting extra lands in. Right. Death Rite Shaman added on Mark's side. Recall, remember that the interaction between two Death Rite Shamans is one can kind of use as denial for another Death Rite Shaman. Yep. Because they both, it's not actually, even with the land ability, it's not a, it's mana, not a mana ability. ability. Yeah. So you can actually, you know, you can, if they try to make land, mana, you can make mana in response, and then that works. So Mark is mulching. And he's uh, milling himself for four. Missed. Uh, and, and that's pretty bad uh, because because of his opponent, because Greg has an active death right shaman, that's actually just a straight whiff on yeah. the mulch. Mulch is more of a card draw. He has, and that, and yeah, Angel of Serenity is going to get exiled. So we have Grizzly Salvage, Restoration, Angel, and, and another Grizzly, Grizzly Salvage. Salvage, and a mulch. Yeah. So Restoration Angel is the only creature, and then some spells in case Greg decides to start dealing damage that way. Uh, Greg does go back up to 20 on the exile. And we're passing the turn back without anything super exciting. And so now, now we have a chance to exile a spell to deal two damage to Greg. I'd imagine Greg just lets this happen because he wants to protect against something bad happening uh, on Mark's turn. In response, turn. Greg could shock Mark, but decides not to. Yep. The danger here is that uh, we're going to start to enter acidic slime territory. There are multiple acidic slimes and an unburial rights yeah. in Mark's hand. So and Mark had the fifth land or had the fourth land plus the absence pilgrim uh but he is missing a second green source it does appear like he's down yeah green. We, we've yeah. got an isolated chapel a goblet shrine an overgrown tomb and a gavany township well he can start townshipping here which actually is pretty based on the speed of greg's hand that that's not irrelevant yeah so greg has his fourth land i can't imagine the, the game well i actually I'll correct that. I was going to say I can't imagine the game comes down to town shipping. The more I think about it, I actually could see it coming down yeah. to that. Uh, but we have a Garrick, uh, which is going to, you know, slow down the effect of town shipping. It's going to probably take out the Death Rite Shaman. Uh, I'd almost certainly not take out the Death Rite Shaman. Really? I'd, okay. I'd go for the mana creature. I still feel like it's more, it's the more relevant thing to be hitting. I mean, because Greg's hand doesn't isn't a graveyard hand. You know, he's got a bunch of Thrag Tusks. I'd rather. Hurt, I'd rather hit their mana. Source. You'd rather hit their mana. And, like, to that point, you know, Mark didn't do anything this last turn, so you potentially time walk him by, by doing that. He's doing that. neither. He's making yeah. a wolf. Do you, do you like that play? Do you not like I'd that I'd have play? to see the rest of Greg's hand. My inclination is to say no, because I want to stop this town. Like, 
you're running out of opportunities to kill these guys with Garrick, and they are going to get bigger. Yeah. Uh, so no, I <laughs> Cavern of Souls for Mark, so now we can cast that acidic slime. And he almost certainly will. Yeah. It's a little bit costly to name it there. Ah, I mean, you already have triple white, so it's not even that that costly. And this is your only double green creature that you're going to have to cast. So we assume that the cavern is naming slime and that we're going to put down slime. And the question is, what is Mark going to blow up with it? Yeah, the cavern, the cavern has named Ooze, which is expected. Yeah. And we see an attack. All right, we're so we're looking for we're looking to take out Garrick, and you know the cavern appears to be threatening um, another Gavany Township activation to you know get past the wolf uh, when in fact it is going to go ahead and cast that acidic slime. So we'll see what I assume that Mark is attacking Garrick with both of his guys. Um, and yep. Yeah, both Garrick. That will that will flip the Garrick unless Greg's willing to make a chump block. E yep. Well, so Greg, I mean, Greg is definitely blocking with the wolf, and the question is whether or not he wants to uh, also throw away the Deathrite Shaman. He, well, he could he could make the Deathrite Shaman's trade, or he could just, you know. And Mark actually opting not to slime here. He's just going to go on the aggro plan. Hmm. I am. I don't have an issue with that play. Yeah. I guess he, he wants to guarantee getting that Garrick off of the table. Yeah. Um, but you know, here comes the slime from Greg Peliquin, uh, and so we're going to get rid of, of the Gavany Township. Township, and then that's going to trade for one of the mana creatures, unless Greg and has a restoration. Now we should see Mark sliming him back. Yeah. Mark. Yeah, Mark shock. drawing another green source, t shocks himself. This way he still has the 3-3 three, three Avacyn's Pilgrim as well. Yeah, I would try to leave up that green source. I would leave up the green source, I believe, so that if you were... I mean, it depends if you're worried about Greg act, you know... I mean, is, is there a unburial creature rights, in the graveyard that you... Unburial rights, on burial rights. You know, I, I kind of want my death rate shaman activation because I don't think I'm attacking here. Okay. So I would have liked well, to have there, the there's mana no for that. danger for Mark of a, something getting into Greg's uh, graveyard and an unburial rights in the same turn, right? So well, can't I mean, he... I mean, if they trade right here, if Acidic Slime blocks, which is going to now, if Greg has a yeah, unburial rights, now true. he can do it again. I think Mark Mark has opened himself up to getting unburial rights, yeah. and getting slimed, uh, possibly, you know, getting slimed multiple times. Which I, I would have wanted to avoid. I would have wa would I wanted uh, the Death Rite Shaman to be untapped when you made that trade. So I feel like we're just we're quite far ahead. Of course, that trade isn't even possible if you leave up the death the activation for the Death Rite Shaman because you have to tap the Pilgrim right there. Um, and Mark Mark maybe just I mean, the is thinking the you know the I'm aggro, on the aggro plan. I'm on I don't the aggro I don't plan, think it means there's not, he's not still supposed frag to tusks here. Yeah. You're not actually on the aggro plan. He's, but they, this is not the way he wins. Right, um, you know, I mean, and, and clearly he'll see that now. Now yeah. you look at the board and like, no, of course that's not how you win. Well, you know, what were we ever thinking? Um, he is on the multiple acidic slime plan. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. It, it seems powerful, but not game breaking. Like the thread discs seem pretty real, as well. But, I mean, I guess, I guess now thread discs and slimes just stare at each other. Well, I mean, Mark's going to want to trade a slime for a Thrag Tusk if possible because of the burial rights, right? Yep, absolutely. And so Greg sees through that, chooses to take the two damage, but he's not going to be able to attack with the Thrag Tusk. You know, he can just play more Thrag Tusks, which I think is what he's going to do. Mark is going to be able to hit his graveyard. The fact that Mark is a little ahead on mana gives him the ability to use his Death Rite Shaman more aggressively. Yep. That cavern named Angel, second Thrag Tusk for Greg. All right. And so getting hit for two, not really a problem for Greg because he keeps on gaining life, gaining life. And at some point, he will be able to start attacking with the Thrag Tusks into the slimes because he'll be able to keep up his own Death Rite Shaman to deal with Unburial Rites on the Acidic Slime, as long as Mark doesn't get to nine mana. Right. Once both players have effectively denied each other the ability to act as a graveyard deck, then this really just becomes a mid-range mirror. So you have to think, when you look at these cards, you have to think about, well, how good is this card actually in a mid-range mirror, mm -hmm. as opposed to you know, thinking about how good they are in a reanimator deck. 
you know, drawing an Angel of Serenity, very good. Whereas like, you know, uh, Grizzly Salvage Mulch, not, not very good. Yeah, they just become impulses and divinations, but divinations just for land. Yeah, this is actually a situation where Obstadat would be a fine card, but still not a great card. Maybe yeah. fine on, yeah, it's like fine on nobody's side of the board. I think that this actually, I'm it just back becomes an enchantment. I that think, yeah, it gains you two life a turn, which is fine. I think this, this board kind of shows why I don't really like it boarded in in this matchup. It's like, yep. you look, you think about it, and you're like, yeah, it'd be kind of underwhelming. You blink it every turn, and that would be neat, but it wouldn't. <laughs> I don't think it'd be getting you toward winning. Yeah. Uh, so Mark has another death right shaman, which just means that, you know, if he wants to death right shaman something specifically, Greg can't steal it from him, but. You know, at this point, we're, we're just clearing out the graveyards and, you know, life totals are going to go up, life totals are going to go down, but we're all going to stay, you know, in the 20s in a comfortable place. Yeah. It's a good... In, I do... The mirror, despite that, you know, this is one of the top decks in the format, the mirror is interesting, which is kind of, you know... Yeah, no, there, there are there's a lot of, a lot of ways to interact with each other. There's, you know, interacting with the land resources and doing the combat math and also interacting with the graveyard resources. There's a lot of jockeying for position. So you see going for an burial rites. Um, now, he's seizing the opportunity with Death Rite Shaman being down to go for the unburial rites. Um, granted, he's not going to get the sec. He probably not get the second half of that unburial rites. You know. you know, Mark main phase will likely. Well, actually, probably won't, won't main phase eat it. So, you know, but he he will. You know, he'll be able to shut down the second half. Yep. Corbett Gray coming by, now moving to 5-0 and with Esper Control. We saw him on camera in round two. I hear he's got some lucky cards. He has some very, very lucky cards. <laughs> All um, right, so we trade Acidic Slime for a Thrag Tusk, and Mark draws a Mulch, which is just a draw spell now. Um, well, if it's... Yeah, I guess I'm trying to think. No, it actually just is a draw spell. But, I mean... Building up to having nine mana in play. If he's left Lingering Souls in, it's not just a draw spell because he can mulch, hold on to priority and play, cast Lingering Souls. That said, that's not even. I mean, okay, that's some one ones, but that's yeah. not actually. It's a very that slow clock that, you know. It's it's relevant in that you know it will eventually help a crater hoof, potentially. But in, yeah. Interestingly enough, Mark's pair of Deathrite Shamans currently represent a pretty good clock. A mulch into death right thrag tusk two lands so a divination kind of yeah so if you're mark you can you can start burning greg out for two a turn if they if he's counter death writing well what i would do because mark has two death rates what i would do is i would just deny greg all his death right activations probably you know like eat that in response I, I agree. So, but if if Mark is the one who's actively death riding and Greg is just waiting for him, Greg gets to deny one of them, so he gets to burn him for two. But kind of in reverse, Greg gets to start attacking with his three three token. So, so yeah. You know, if if we are racing, it's it's a race of two versus three. Yeah. Per turn. So um, both players kind of trying to draw to a, a a stalemate breaker, and that is actually one of the stalemate breakers here. This card is. Grook Relentless on this board is insane for Greg. He, if, I, he's supposed to just flip it as soon as possible, yep. and then I'll, and then you know flip it off the Death Rite Shaman. You get to punch the small Death Rite Shaman, and then you get to start sacking your guys you for value. Or you just ultimate, yeah, you sack your guys for value. Yeah, yeah. and go get a do. Angel of Serenity or uh, a Crater Hoof Behemoth, whichever one is going to get you a victory faster. Right. Card. Was it? He's rereading it. Yep. Okay. Yes, yep. it does flip. So we were at two loyalty, and we'll you know get a nice big die on that soon enough. Thank you, Judge. Um, and at this point, like if you're Greg, I I'm not sure if I actually like an attack here. Like I think I just want to be able to protect the guru. Um, and so, like getting in for five damage or ten damage or whatever the case may be doesn't seem super valuable here. Um, yeah, I, I mean, the, I do want to just protect for the gear, protect the gear. It's it's just so awesome to be able to, 
you know, turn your token into. Um, yeah, I mean, dealing damage right isn't. Now. I mean, I don't think he feels that it's too big of a threat. Is what's going on. Yeah. And it, and in all, in honesty, it probably isn't. Well, I mean, like if Mark just lets that damage all go through, then he gets to attack with two creatures that kill Garrick, right? Because uh, he, he would have had the acidic slime and he would have the three four death right shaman. Yeah. Okay. That that. Against one blocker. Right. I guess that that's very true. That's pretty bad. Plays land. It looks like he's passing the turn, and we'll get a Greg will gain life. Gaining life to me seems does seem superior to life loss right now. Um, yeah, I, Greg. Greg has the planeswalker. He wants the game to go long. Yeah, every, you're, you're going to deal damage and reap big chunks, not little chunks. It's like every turn you can keep the game going on is another activation you get off your planeswalker. Yeah. And now I don't think Mark's Mark's going to be hard pressed to answer to Garrick. There aren't too many cards outside of Angel of Serenity and Crater of Behemoth that do that, and Crater of doesn't even really do it right now. So, so if we're Reg, one of the things that we could have done, so Reg is mulching here. Um, he's looking for a seventh land, uh, which he's going to hit. One interesting thing that you could do, could have done there though, is tap the Deathrite Shaman to exile a land uh, in your graveyard. And Mark is then put to the choice of either exiling it response to prevent the damage, or prevent the mana from being gained, which would allow Greg to then unburial rights. Um, well, why would he? Why would he care about the mana being added? Uh, because if he allows Greg to add the mana, he gets seven mana, um, and then Greg can activate Garrick, sacrifice a creature, get an Angel of Serenity. Okay. Um, but that would also be sacrificing the Garrick at that point, wouldn't it? Instead of because the Garrick uh, was a two, it started. Isn't it a two. minus one for? Oh, it's a minus. No, you're right. It's, it's a minus, minus one. Uh, you may this, be is, right, this is worth finding. It's a out. minus one. No, you're absolutely yeah. right. So that, that'd be fine. Um, I mean, like the the way things played out is absolutely fine as well. You know, yeah. Greg now has both the seventh and the eighth mana. So next turn he can sacrifice. You know, for example, the Death Touch Wolf. Go get Crater Hoof Behemoth. Cast Crater Hoof Behemoth. And attack for, uh, which should be his life total. Yeah, like 23, 24, something like that. Yeah, a lot. A large number. So we're grizzly He's salvaging. Out. Restoration angel, the best. It's another restoration angel and a thrag. Thrag tusk. Thrag tusk, probably the best find. Thrag tusk seems like the most reasonable thing. It gets you. I think it gets him high enough in life that he's got enough blockers to survive a Crater Hoof Behemoth. Um, don't, you know, haven't done all the exact math yet. Uh, but it's going to put him in 23 with 7 toughness. Right. And we're exiling, it looks like we exile a creature, probably a acidic slime. Uh, Thrag Tusk. Thrag Tusk, okay. And so, so Greg Pelican, you know, as you can tell, that's, uh, going, Mark has the difficult situation, even if he wins, the timer's pretty low on their match right now. Yeah. Uh, I don't think, you know, that's not too much of a piece. It and it's certainly pretty possible for him to win in time, but it's very unlikely. Right. I mean, yeah, he has to be adjusting his play speed at this point to accommodate for the chance that he can win. Yeah. Uh, I think Greg drew a white card for the turn, possibly another angel. We'll find out. But I, I, I think his turn is pretty scripted that he goes and gets a creator. He goes hook. and gets something. Some. What well, he goes and really gets whatever he'd like to get. He draw angel of serenity. I think he just drew, yeah, an he drew the angel. Okay, I mean, yeah, he can do that, and then he can even, you know, he gets to leave up death right to protect against and make who another knows wolf. What. And this seems this is this seems over to me. Yeah. So figure out what we're targeting. I'd I, at a minimum, I want to target the death right shaman. I think I also target the thrag tusk. Do you mean, does he have two things in his own yard, the quality that he can target? Uh, no, no. he doesn't even have one. Yeah. 
Yeah, death rate drag, no third target. All right. That seems absolutely correct. So Mark should have a 3-3 in play. It looks like he missed it. I don't think it really matters. Oh, maybe he's reaching for one. No. So get in for six. Make another wolf. Mark goes down to 17. Oh, nope, we're going to sacrifice now. Sure. I mean, you'd sacrifice now so you can have another creature next turn. Yeah. That's the idea. I, I mean, I'm sacrifice sure. now, sacrifice. Yeah. Do whatever you want. It'd be very hard for him to lose at this point. Uh, he gets creative with Behemoth, so now it's in his hand. Yeah. All right. And I don't, there's not a card that will, there's not a card that will get Mark out of this situation. As Andrew Cuneo is fond of saying on his stream, it doesn't matter what Greg does from now on. It's all going to work out. Okay, and we have the hand extended. All right, so Greg Pelican defeats Mark Rathbon two games to zero. The Junker Animator Mirror, he moves to 5-0. Oh. Um, probably three more wins from a top eight spot. If he gets the next three, if 8-0 oh, should yeah. be able to get there. Otherwise, 9-1 if they get a loss before that. Still a long road ahead. Still a long road ahead. Uh, so talking, if you've been following us.